So we've learned now about the major mental health issues that are facing seniors, right? Which was depression, bipolar disorders, anxiety disorders, and dementia. And what I wanted to do was do a, a research into whether there is any research in meditation and whether meditation can actually help seniors. Can meditation actually help people with depression or anxiety? So for my next few slides, I'd like to share some of the information that I've found. Uh, the good thing about this is that what I've been finding, it's very optimistic and positive. So I'm gonna take you through a few of these studies. The first study that I'd like to take you through here is a meditation and a depression study. This was done at the University of California, California. And what they did is they studied uh, brief daily yogic meditation uh, for mental health sessions. And what they did is they studied individuals who already have been diagnosed with the mild, mild depressive uh, symptoms. And these people are family caregivers um, of dementia patients. So they are not dementia patients, but they take care of dementia patients. And it's a high stress, highly emotional job. And the people that were studied all have some uh, mild depressive symptoms. They studied 39 participants. The average age was about 60, uh, 60 years old. So it does fit into our general range of understanding seniors. What they did in that study is they practice um, Kirtan Kriya meditation. They did this 12 minutes a day, every day for eight weeks. And then after this time of the study, they perform their results. They have particular studies that they do in, in, in measuring, um, measuring and, and getting responses from the individuals. So I'll just summarize a couple of those studies. So what they did find is that there's a lower levels of uh, depressive symptoms um, in, in some of these patients. So about 65%. So out of the 30, 39 or so, there's 65% or so of them um, are showing that with a 50% improvement. They use the Hamilton depression rating scale. So there's a 50% improvement in the rating scale. And from an overall perspective, they saw a greater improvement in mental health overall with 52% of the participants who showed a 50% improvement. Although this is a relatively, you could say a small study because it's 39 individuals, it is starting to show a positive direction for the practice of meditation for older adults with, with regards to depression. So now I'm gonna move on and talk about another uh, research. So this one was specific to the bipolar disorder. This, this study was done on, based on mindfulness-based uh, uh, studies, like mindfulness cognitive therapy. The study was a bit smaller. It was on 12 individuals who have been diagnosed with uh, a bipolar disorder. The average age is about 38, 39 years old. So I know it's a little bit uh, younger than the seniors uh, range that we're talking about. However, the study did include seniors. What they did was they had 12 group sessions once a week over a three month period and in the United States, so in Massachusetts, uh, in the, as a Massachusetts General Hospital. The overall finding, what they did see is that there is a lower residual depressive mood symptoms, there's less attentional difficulties and an overall increase in social well-being. So after a three month study, there is definitely some positive research here on the, um, on the impacts of this on by on a bipolar disorder. Uh, I have the article title here and the link for a feature reference as well. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, meditation and anxiety. So this one's a, a very fascinating study that was done. Uh, their approach was not uh, reaching out to patients and it, um, doing direct uh, study with them. Instead, they, they gathered a large amount of research papers and they went through the entire research paper to understand it. So this study is a global study. It was along, around the world. I mentioned all the names, but I'll mention a few of them. So United States, India, Sweden, Spain, Germany, Japan, you know, across the world, there's so many, including Canada. And what they also did is they studied various meditation um, techniques and approaches. So it wasn't just one. So there was yoga, tai chi, kijong, you know, mindfulness, transcendental. And they combined all this research all into one to kind of to understand, um, to understand what the effects are. 
Um, they, they use particular scales um, that, are, that I, I mentioned here, but ultimately what they found is they did see uh, a reduction in anxiety across the board, some meditation methods performing better than others. So an example of some of the meditation methods that perform better were the uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, and the yoga process. The other meditation methods uh, performed okay, and some of them, they, they didn't see many um, great impact. It, because it was a large uh, number of meditation, I didn't put everything here just for the simplicity, but overall, th there is a positive, um, a positive foundational research showing that uh, meditation can help with anxiety as well. Since th this was a global uh, secondary research study, and it actually looked at almost 2,500, so 2,466 uh, subjects or um, studying on people. So it was a more substantial uh, study. Uh, for the last um, study that I want to talk about is related to meditation and dementia. So based on the research that I was doing, I did find it a little bit difficult to find um, direct studies. Uh, there, right now, from what I'm seeing in the research, there's a lot of research proposals and studies and um, foundational, but I haven't found too much specific to meditation and dementia. I will mention one um, study which, um, which focused on over a 10-year period looking at older adults who have dementia and understanding from all those studies and compiling it into, into this research paper that they did. They did find that there was an overall um, improvement of quality of life and cognition. So, you know, better memory, um, better understanding of participants with dementia. Um, again, this one note that I want to add to is primary research is really needed. And by primary, I mean, um, so primary meaning that uh, actually studying, doing clinical tries and um, being able to, to understand that data.